We do our real estate investment market update every seminar. And today's update, we want to focus on a few things, not only in specific numbers in the Calgary market, but we want to also focus on things that are going on within Calgary that we find are going to be beneficial to real estate investors. Mm -hmm. um, these are some of the headlines that I pulled off uh, the Calgary Herald and some other news sites just yesterday. Um, if you look at the first one, housing starts to decline in Calgary and Alberta wide so far in 2023. So our builders are not building enough inventory, which we talked about a little bit in the opening. We're not building enough homes for the population that's coming into the, city, into the province. Um, and then the second headline, hundreds of thousands move into Calgary, making the city unaffordable. Yeah. We're getting so much immigration, both, both interprovincially and internationally, uh, refugees included from various areas around the world that we have tons and tons of people coming in and that's increasing the demand. We talked about it, the SDR ratio in the beginning. Yeah. Well, if demand goes up and up and up and our housing starts are going down, well, that's creating a crazy over, over, supply, over demand situation. We don't have enough supply. And then the bottom two headlines deal with how our city council is approaching this housing situation. We've all read the headlines about how the, the federal government is just doing dismally on the housing situation all across Canada. They're not, they don't have enough programs or tax incentives or, or grant incentives or anything to promote the increase in the supply of housing. Well, our city council, they're defeating proposals that will streamline uh, building approvals. So the builders out there, or even you know some of the renovators, if you're trying to put a, a basement suite into your house, yeah. if it takes more and more time to get approval for that building permit or for the development permit, that just increases your costs and it slows down the new inventory. Yeah. And also there was a, an affordable housing recommendation that went through, it was like half a dozen points or a dozen points in how to increase the supply of affordable housing within the city and city council rejected that as well. So we have government working against the housing supply and we have more demand you know, in, the, in terms of people coming here and it's creating a per perfect storm for real estate investors. Yeah. If you have a rental property, you're, the rents you're gonna be able to charge are gonna be huge. Yeah, because all of this combined just causes chaos. And, and I was telling Tim when I got back from the weekend, I was at High Steakhouse with some of the, the city's biggest developers uh, for dinner on Saturday night. And Tim, they were even telling me when plans get knocked back at city council, they have to go back to the drawing board, yeah. change the plans and then resubmit. That could delay a project. And we're talking on the west side where there's empty lots ready to be built. Housing is in need. That may delay another three months just to get that project off the ground. So all of this going on, um, people moving here, housing starts not, not happening. It's causing numbers, actually, your your actual active listings, which today was just over 2,500. Tim and I were hoping when we reached September that we would be above 3,000. And Tim, the norm for September is about 5,500. Yeah, yeah. So we're nowhere near where we have to be. So when we sit here and know which communities and put a seminar on like this, we know exactly what's going to happen because of these factors and you need to understand that and so the sdr what tim was talking about the supply demand ratio you have to understand in each community what's going on and why these factors matter to that yeah and so just looking at at the numbers here um not the ones i highlighted if you look at the third line down active listings if you can look for the last three years in september september 2021, there was over 6,000 active listings oh, yeah. in the month of September. Yeah. Last year, down to 4,800 active listings. This year, 3,771. And this is um, today. Today, right? yeah. But you have to take so, out the pending eight or 900 of those because they're conditional, conditionally and sold property. And so you take out 900, you're at 2,500. Then you take out another thousand because they're condos. You're left with 1,500, roughly, detached yeah. homes out there, or, or and that's every detached. price range. So from $350,000 to like $10 million. So these numbers that we wanted, Tim and I want to see this, you know, with active and pending up around 4,000, yeah. Tim, we're not going to get to that maybe this year. No. No. So that means for the remainder of the year, prices are going to remain strong. Prices are going to continue. We have to tell you, we just sold a client's 
<laughs> housed in, in Minapore the other day. We bought this property for 410,000 two years ago, two years ago, under two years, right? Yeah. Under two years, okay. And we just sold it for 605,000. That's a $205,000 profit in under two years. And why did that property sell, Tim, for 605,000? Because there was nothing else on the market. Yeah. We have to tell you, we have to tell you, there was nothing else. And someone from Russia came here and they needed a property and they wanted a mortgage helper. That property could have even sold for 625. That's how much pent up demand there is for a product like that. So everybody out there, has to understand what is going on in Calgary. It's crazy. It's not even going to slow down. That's what no. we're, we're disappointed. Look for. at the first line on here, the total sales. They're up 30% this, so far this month, halfway through the month of September. And in, in August, they were up 27.8%. Now, what's that doing? You just look at the bottom line that I highlighted there, the average price. It's up almost 10% for the month of September. Mm -hmm. So when we're seeing price increases of 10%, you know, compared to last year in September, that's just crazy. Yeah. When we see the bigger city centers like Vancouver and Toronto, they're just starting to turn around. They saw some big decreases mm -hmm. from the beginning of the year until now, and they're finally starting to turn around and see some little tiny increases. But Calgary's average, it's not going down. It's going up and up big time. Yeah, and you might be sitting there saying, we hear this all the time, and we're too late to get in the market. No, you're not. Our average is sitting at 540. We've been saying for about five years now that our average should be around 650,000. We did post a video on our Pro TV just last week about that. And if you're wondering where we get that 650,000 from, just go watch that video on our Pro TV channel on YouTube. So um, Tim, anything else to yeah, add on this? That's part? our market report for mid-September here. Um, take a look at these numbers. And if you're a real estate investor, what we're trying to tell you is that the investors who got in the game last year and they saw a 10% increase, over the, the year, mm -hmm. the, the investors that can get in right now are still going to see another 10% increase next year. Yeah. So we're not saying, oh, well, it's a bad time to buy. Uh, we do mention that you know we bought in up markets and down markets, mm -hmm. but it may be an up market for 2023, but it's going to be a down market for 2024 because price has got nowhere to go but up. Yeah. So we will ask Danielle DeMarco to come in. Danielle is our real estate investment mortgage specialist. We love to promote her because she not only helps you get a mortgage if you're buying a home, she helps you develop a real estate investment plan so you can have multiple mortgages and own multiple homes um, so you can increase your wealth over time. So you, if you want to come on in, Danielle, that would be great. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so I'm here to give you kind of a quick market update. Um, I wanted to touch on one thing. So tonight's topic is about purchasing cash flowing properties. So what helps contribute to the cash flowing properties from a mortgage side of things I kind of wanted to touch on. So one of those things self-explanatory is interest rates. Obviously, the lower the interest rate, the lower the mortgage payment, therefore, the better the cash flow. Right now, kind of a market update is we've seen bond yields actually come down slightly, which means that we've seen fixed interest rates decrease slightly over the last few weeks. Not a lot, but a little and every little bit helps. So if you're already approved or pre-approved or taking possession of a new property soon, make sure you're doubling back to see if you're able to lower your rate just due to those slight increases that just recently happened. Second thing is your mortgage terms. So for some people, you might want a shorter term thinking, hey, interest rates are going to be coming down in a couple of years. I really want a shorter term. But you'll notice that when you take a shorter intro or a shorter term on the mortgage side of things, the interest rates get really, really high. So you need to weigh out from a cash flow perspective when you're purchasing a property, you need to ask your broker for numbers on different terms. What is it my payment going to look like if I take a three, a four, a five, or a variable term so that you can make sure you're making the best decision so that you're not negative cash flowing in the short term, but you're also keeping in mind those long-term goals uh, as interest rates may adjust. The third thing to consider is amortizations. So one thing that we can do with properties is the longer the amortization, so the longer that we can extend it out, the shorter, or the, sorry, the lower your payment is going to be. So obviously the lower your mortgage payment, the more positive cash flow you have. So this applies not only to properties that you're thinking of purchasing, but for those of you who want to be investing and this goal of yours is to have multiple investment properties, 
that amortization is really critical on properties that you already own as well. So looking at the grand scheme of things, can we adjust amortizations not only on properties that you're purchasing, but also ones you already own? And another point is down payment. So obviously the larger the down payment, the lower your mortgage payment is going to be. And this is where we kind of need to reevaluate because sometimes it's fabulous 5% down payment and we can cash flow when interest rates are low. But sometimes in markets like this where interest rates are a little bit higher, we need to reevaluate the down payment component of our investment plan because maybe we need to increase the down payment on a property in this year when we have a little bit of higher interest rates, but then we could potentially decrease our down payments in 2025-ish when we're going to see some hopefully some lower interest rates. So, you know, adjusting for down payment depending on what cash flow looks like as a result is important. So when you're looking at financing and setting up your financial investment plan, it's really critical that we not only look at where you're going, but also where you are and what you already have. How can we adjust things and tweak things in your portfolio to help those properties cash flow better, which in times like this, when we're seeing interest rates a little bit higher on new properties, we can sometimes offset some of the cash flow from other properties against properties that maybe aren't as cash flow positive. So rates. Again, important to look at how much down payment as a result of where interest rates are at to potentially offset that. And ultimately going forward, you know, making sure we're setting up financing on the rest of the properties so that you can accumulate as many properties as you want as well. And the more cash flow you have, the better situation and the better your debt ratios are for qualifying to accumulate multiple properties. So cash flow isn't just important for, you know, having money coming in every month and being cash flow positive, but it's also important so that we can continue that investment journey and qualify for additional properties. So where we're at right now. Again, fixed rates have come down a little bit, probably a little bit of a blip in the matrix. I don't think that they're going to continue to decrease at this point in time. We also saw the Bank of Canada leave the overnight lending rate the same recently, which was fabulous. Uh, there is still talks of another increase before the end of the year, though, um, as we're trying to combat that inflation. So that one's touch and go. Uh, you talk to some people, they say, yeah, for sure, there's going to be an increase. You talk to others, they're like, yeah, maybe, we'll, maybe it'll stay the same. So uh, to be seen, um, but there's a couple more meetings with the Bank of Canada prior to the end of this year, so we'll see where that goes. So bottom line, we've talked about this all the time, but trying to time the market, it's just not a good idea as an investor, and as that and Tim preach this too, but as investors, we really need to think with our, our brain, our mind, and the math. So sentimental or feelings that come into play, they tend to hinder on when we're trying to do investment financing and when we should be purchasing. So listening to what Tim and Azad are saying about what areas do we need to be in? What can you get for rents? Listening to your broker about, okay, well, this is what I recommend for terms and rates. This is how we're going to cash flow. Might not be necessarily your ideal preference on down payment or amortization or term, but if it's going to work for the end game, the long-term goals of accumulating multiple properties and setting up your financing, then sometimes we need to listen with our mind and the math and, and not so much our hearts. So um, that's kind of your market update. Those are the few things that kind of touch on what Tim and his are going to talk about how to help with your cash flowing of properties. If you do want a second look at anything in your portfolio or you want to talk about financing going forward, feel free to reach out. Hey, thanks, Danielle. And uh, we did notice your little fish you got there beside you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, that is my uh, university student's fish that she was gifted. And somehow, as a parent, I have taken over the feeding and cleaning and care for this lovely fish. Yep, but yep. it keeps me company. <laughs> Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, Danielle will put her information into the chat there. If anyone is looking to either refinance or work out where the next move is, uh, simply just contact Danielle. As we said, she doesn't just get you a mortgage, she gets you a mortgage plan. She's worked with our clients since 2006. It's been a long time. She still puts up with us, but she is the best. And that's why we use her. Um, and she's done amazing things, Tim, for our clients out there, yeah. uh, especially people coming from all sorts of backgrounds. So, and if you have any questions for her, just put them in the chat. Um, she's going to put her contact is her contact info is on the slide, but she'll put it in the chat as well, uh, in case you missed this. And yeah, ask her anything you want. She'll be she's our like we've said many times she's our resident expert in all things mortgage. So, 
Uh, hopefully she can help you out if you have a question for her.